right, we're back here in section 12.3. We'll do the second part of this uh, today. And uh, we'll start off by estimating the parameters. Now, when the conditions are met, we can do inference about the regression line. Uh, and the first step is to estimate the unknown parameters. Okay, so we got that cooking. All right, let's get that slide. Uh, now, if we calculate the sample regression line y hat equals a plus bx, the residuals estimate how much y varies about the population regression line. All right, so A uh, rep uh, estimates alpha, B estimates beta, and S represents sigma. Okay, we have those estimates there that we have, which is kind of common sense. I think it kind of links those together. Um, and so when doing that, to find the standard deviation, that's the formula that's being used. Okay, so uh, therefore, if we're going to go into the standard error of the slope, that would be the similar one because, again, we probably don't know what that population standard deviation is, so we'll use that instead. Okay, so the standard error is interpreted as how far the sample slope typically varies from the population slope if we do it many, many, many times. Okay, that's kind of the free, the common language that we use there. Okay, so let's get going here. Let's look at a problem. Earlier, Mrs. Barrett's class used computer software to perform a least squares regression analysis of their helicopter data. Recall that the data came from dropping 70 paper helicopters from various heights and measuring the flight times. Now, some output from the regression analysis shown here, we check conditions for performing inference earlier. So the estimate for alpha, again, we would use, uh, we would use the uh, a is what we'd use from our sample, and again, that's going to be 20.0376. If the helicopters drop from zero centimeters, it'll take uh, 20 seconds to land on average. Okay, so that's kind of a weird type of thing. Um, all right, so the slope is telling us that 0 0.00574. So again, we kind of see that from our data right here. It says for each increase of one centimeter drop height, the average flight time increases by that much. Okay, and uh, our standard deviation, again, we have right here, standard SE, right? We have it right here. Oh, I'm sorry, 0.16. Yeah, we had that from a different calculation. Sorry about that. that oh, no, right here is there it is. Right there, S right there. Uh, that is going to be the actual flight times typically vary by about 0.168181 second from the times predicted with that, using that drop height. So the actual, so that's, that's what we get there. Um, and then part of it for D, uh, give the standard error. Uh, there's where the standard error is. I'm sorry, standard error right here is right here. That's in that data print that we have. Uh, if we repeated the random assignment many times, the slope of the sample regression line would typically vary by about that much, not much, from the slope of the true regression line for predicting flight time and drop height. So that's actually pretty good right there. Yeah. All right, so once again, uh, the formula that's kind of used and we'll uh, we'll point you towards the calculator uh, in just a second here. Again, uh, the tech video uh, 31 on the tech corner, uh, that's the one you kind of want to watch to produce this uh, interval that we have. I think it's a uh, very good uh, go through it. Again, we'll run through it in class as well as we look at an example uh, for doing that. But that's the formula that's used. And remember, it's n minus 2 degrees is what we use for, the, for that. So sample size minus 2 is the degrees of freedom. Uh, in this case, so remember that. Uh, remember, the values of t given in the computer regression output are not the critical values for a confidence interval, so remember that as we kind of move forward here a little bit. All right, a couple things here. Let's look at a problem. All right, everyone knows that cars and trucks lose values for the more they're driven. Now, can we predict the price of a used F-150 Super Crew if we know how many miles it has? So we have some data here. It looks like uh, we have 16 uh, samples here for the miles driven and the price. Uh, we would assume that uh, the higher miles would, would lower the price, but we'll see what, what we come up with here. All right, so here's some computer output from the least squares regression analysis of this data. We want to construct and interpret a 90% confidence interval for the population, so state plan do conclude. Let's do that, um, looking at the information that we have here. All right, state, we're going to do a 90% confidence interval for the slope of the population regression line relating y equaling the price to x equals miles driven for f-150 super crew 4x4 is listed on sale and this is off autotrader.com evidently all right so we're going to do our plan and we're going to do our liner remember we do that so it's a t interval for slope the, okay the scatter plot shows if we look back shows a clear linear pattern also the residual plot shows no leftover curve patterns check independent 
Yeah. We, yeah. And we assume that the 16 is way less than 10% of all used F-150s. Yeah. Normal. There's no strong skewness. If we look back at the screen, previous screen, we'll see that there is no strong skewness or outliers in the histogram of residuals. Uh, the scatter plot, uh, scatter points around the residual appears to be about the same. And uh, it is random. We did do a random sample of 16 um, uh, used F-150. So we're all good in our, in our plans phase there. Let's do the do. So the degrees of freedom would be 14. Uh, we got our T value of 1.761. Uh, so again, if we plot those in there, we would see that our confidence interval would be uh, as, as shown with that. And I'll kind of talk through a little bit on the uh, on the calculator part. That's again where I would do that. But again, when you're doing that phase, make sure that you're showing what you're putting in the calculator and what you're getting out of the calculator. So let's get to the conclusion. Now we're 90% we're confident that that interval uh, captures the slope of the population regression line relating y, which is the price to x equals the miles driven for the used F-150s list on AutoTrader. So again, using tech, uh, tech video in the tech corner uh, number 31, uh, I'll kind of show you this again. You got to do that linear regression t. Uh, it'll make you kind of put in list one, list two, use your confidence level. And the great thing is it comes spits out to you. It gives you that B value, tells you degrees of freedom. It gives you that interval right there. Uh, that'll be what the screenshots look like. And we'll walk through that um, in class when we do the when going through this. We'll stop and pause and we'll run through that. But take a look at that Tech Corner video. Um, if not, uh, to, that they show you that really clearly. And it works out just absolutely awesome. So uh, again, uh, when you use that list of data values, an exam question, wait a moment for typing the kit. Make sure to read the question through. Often information is provided that makes it unnecessary for you to type in the data. So once again, like I said, they'll give you the information sometimes without having to go through all that, and that can save you some valuable time. So always make sure, uh, you know, you always can do that. But it, as we all know, it does take time to put that in there. But make sure uh, if they give you the data that you need, and the information that you need uh, instead, you don't have to go that data route. So, all right, well, that wraps up uh, 12.3b, I guess, is what we call the second day of it. We'll uh, come back and wrap up uh, chapter 12 next time. Until then, I'm Mr. Bowman.